everybody. Then we start. We are uh, five past five. We have about an hour and a half. I think we will have enough time. Um, so welcome again to the uh, core working group, the interim meeting, the first one after the summer. I hope you have a great vacation. Um, I'm Jaime and uh, Marco uh, is there uh, with us as well. We will be chairing the session as usual. And uh, you already know uh, where the minutes will be taken. I think uh, they have been copy pasted in the Webex and in the Jabber. Um, please uh, help us <laughs> taking notes as well. That's very welcome as, as usual. So the note well, you know that it applies to all of the communications on the on these uh, sessions on the Webex, um, just like with the normal ITF sessions. So, you know, it guides our our, our practices, and you know, it's also about uh, not so much, so not only about the IPR or or other legal uh, items, but also about the general behavior. So try to be nice to each other. I think that's it. There is no more slides here. Um, the topics we have, well, the main topic for this interim, as you know, is the resource directory. I don't know if everybody has had a look at the discussions. I have tried, but there is actually plenty of material, which uh, Christian has uh, very nicely and, and generously uh, compiled in the repository. If you go to the core GitHub repository, uh, where you go to the resource directory, and uh, you have the point-to-point -point responses markdown, which is very detailed and contains all, all has been discussed. There is about one, two, three, four, five, I don't know, like a, a dozen issues in the tracker as well. But I, I, at least I would recommend to go first to the markdown. Um, Christian, um, do you have uh, slides for the presentation? Or how, how do you want to so, do this session? OK, uh, so the, the way I would like to go about this um, is to go through a mixture of um, issues that have been aggregated from the um, from the comments and the comments themselves. Um, now, I I would like to say I have been, but actually I'm I'm there. There is about four left, so I'll I hope I won't miss anything important there. Uh, I have been sorting them in basically by the the level of feedback that I would hope to get from or the importance of feedback that I would like to get from the working group. Mm -hmm. So that's those those black labels you'll see in if you're already in the issue tracker. I'll start um, sharing my screen momentarily. Yeah, I see them. The WGF uh, three. Yeah, working group feedback. Um, so, um, so what I'd like to do is basically count down from them and see whether we get through everything. And by the time we reach WGF uh, three or two, um, I might even just kind of flick them through the screen. And if anyone sees something that kind of hits their attention, but it's it's those should be those should be really no brainers. Um, okay. So uh, sorry, will you be sharing or? I will. I would, I yes, um, I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll try to share okay. screen here. Sorry. Uh, I think maybe I need to stop sharing first. Go ahead. Um, hang on a second, please. Um, which okay. I will also copy paste the URL to the of the repo to the Webex, by the way, in case people some some. Oh yeah, please, please, please do. And um, for, for you to see what I'm seeing, if you're on the repository, um, I'm just pushing this here. So I've been kind of literally. Um, classifying thing, uh, triaging things uh, as you were introducing the note well, but I hope I know well what should be there. So um, without further ado, let's get started with the points where I'd like to have a feedback on. Uh, hold um, just a second. I, at least I don't see anything yet. Okay. I don't either. Oh, sorry. Um, so the camera, do you see my video screen stream? It says that this is starting to share the content, but it also says, at least to me, that there is some connection issues on your on your side. Not anymore, actually. It just disappeared. Um, so there, um, I'm. So now there is no video, and now there is, or. I think there has never been video, at least for me. Okay. No video. Um, it's showing a, a circle. Okay. So the um. 
that's that's bad. Um, there might be some. I get a warning here that there's low bandwidth uh, on on your computer, and that is not currently been, available. I, I should have like at least six megabit up. At, um, yeah, but try try stopping your video and see whether your slides go through them. Yeah. Okay. Because I've in other setups I've seen that the um, that slides really only work if you are sharing video. Don't know why this would why one would do things that way, but okay, video is down. Um, how about now? Let's wait a bit. It says it says it's sharing my screen. Webex is uh, telling me that I'm viewing your screen, but your screen is wide. Um, I can assure you it isn't. Um, In the meanwhile, I can show mine, or someone else can, if you want. Basically, if you could, if you could show the um, show the issue tracker and list the and click into the WGF nine level because that's where I'd like to start. <clears throat> but I'm, I'll, 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 I'll try reconnecting here once. If that doesn't work, um, we'll fall back to me asking someone else to share. Sounds good. Um, I'll be right back. So now I didn't have video active at any point before, so maybe it works now. Uh, still doesn't look like it. Okay, so um, Jaime, can you, or, or one, of, one of the chairs be my, yeah. be my person? No problem. Okay. Um, so let's start with the one that is marked um, WGF9. That's the fallback or default security model. Click in there, please. And once more. Um, so one of the, the feedback points, and we've already talked about this, I think, at the, at the ITF proper or the, the, the last interim, not sure, um, is that we should have at least something that we can recommend people to implement in the resource directory as a security policy, because we are introducing that there could be could be any, but that seems to be a bit too abstract for for people to work from. So the one um, the two contenders here are the first come first serve model and the endpoint names. So the endpoint names would be basically what Lightweight M2M is doing. Um, if you could scroll down to the end, last comment. So that's I unfortunately I haven't managed. And maybe zoom in a bit, or make the screen wider. I don't know. Um, so the um, what I what I would like to put in there, and it would if if anyone has suggestion of how to do it differently, it would be helpful to have them now. Otherwise, other than when I finish the text, would be um, basically this. Um, so the RD members who registered for an end, who registered with a particular endpoint name. And for depending on what the credentials are on the client side, um, this would be remembered by some of the some, by by an identifier derived from those credentials, and we'd have to spell out for each and every way of uh, way of authentication how this would be done. So if DTLS is used without any client authentication, then the registration could only be accessed from that very DTLS connection or possibly a resume session. If there's a self-signed certificate, that's good. That's kept as a um, as the identifier for that name. Again, until that that registration expires. If the registration expires, um, everything's fair game again. The resource directory might remember for some time, but it doesn't need to. Um, and if a client comes back and says that, sees that their preferred name is taken, this is about random um, names anyway, so they can just come up with a new one if it turns out to fail. Um, if there is a um, certificate chain, there could be even a bit more persistence for clients that come up again after having renewed their certificate, but it's not really essential. Um, for Lake, with RPKs or certificates, it could work basically the same way. For the ACE OSCO profile, I'd need a bit of help from people familiar with ACE, whether there is any 
um, any scope or any claim in an ACE token that is that can be thought to really identify the client because as I understand, ACE doesn't really so much identify the client as in assigns a precise identity that's exactly that client but more um, expresses authentication and one authentication could be to um, be recognized as having this particular identity. If there's something like that, we could use it. Otherwise, there won't be any ACE OSCO profile for for this application. Uh, there are two ways you can do it. Uh, one way is there actually is, an, is a subject claim that could be used for that purpose. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, the second way is if it is using a PSK, you could use the PSK as well. Uh, the third way is it's possible to actually assign an ident a, a CWT identifier. Um, I don't know whether that would be a good way or not. Okay. Um, the subject claim sounds about the most uh, suitable, so maybe it's enough if we put that in there. Um, on the on the PSK and on, and signed CWT, um, I'd have to read up to understand what that actually means. So, Christian, a question. Uh, I, I haven't read this. I, I don't. I'm just jumping in now. What? How is this extensible, or or can it change? Or I mean, this is, this is configuration. This is this is this is really not um, not a, a full application. This is more like. The, the, the very minimal set that people can get started with and then can build their applications on or could release a proper docu a proper specification for something that encompasses this and other things. Um, and I suppose that um, it could even allow for resource for RDs to to recognize things that are not explicitly in there, but like if if they have a clue of how to identify the client in a more persistent way and they are sure that this works just do it but it's what we are asked being asked for is some kind of minimal thing that people can use to understand this and possibly put into implementations as a default behavior okay thanks um I don't think that we have any other item on the issue tracker with feedback level nine. So I'd go to the um, can I please switch to the um, to the uh, point to point response document. So I'm I'm not yet entirely sure I understand this list. So essentially, you you are defining some default. Uh, comparisons that establish that the identity hasn't changed. Yes. And some of them are weird, like certificate fingerprints. So if I actually renew my certificate, I'm no longer uh, yeah. This is about self-signed certificates. So if you're renewing yourself, I'm, I'm, this, this is kind of a first idea and I'm perfectly fine if it turns out that some of those ideas are bad and should not be done that way. Yeah. So self-signed certificate would maybe preferably say uh, signed with, I mean, what can change there? I mean, in some sense, the, the public key seems to be the right level yes exactly and, and for, when you talk about the session resumption then it would be some pre-master secret or something like that, that 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 will be the same independently of of how many resumptions you have so if we have yeah. a host name or a subject identifier that is the natural candidate yes and everything else i would uh, uh, prefer to to tie to the key, uh, because in that case, if, if I'm doing something new, I will know what I should be using. So I don't, don't have some, some bizarre rules that are all different, uh, but I always go for, for something like a host name or a subject identifier, 
and uh, if that doesn't exist, I go for the key. Sounds good to me. That will also help in the future, so you don't have to add an uh, ACE ad hoc profile to handle. Exactly. Um, yeah. The thing is with um, for um, okay. So so, but a tie tie to the key would mean um, the 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 most general key that is involved there, because if you're doing lake, then there is the 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 OSCOR key, but that's not the key you're tying to. But the OSCOR key was derived from an through a chain from another key, and you go for the most general key there. So are you thinking public key or, or, or sort of the key you used in the key derivation? Um, in, in that case, you, you wind up with a public key. Right. So, so yes, so that, 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 that would be the right thing. Yeah. Makes sense. Thank but, you. But the, but the, from the general, but I mean, setting aside the rules that would that make sense i think so okay and um, i'm i've taken a note here and we'll make this into some text um okay i think we are back to the um to the point of point response then um and if you could just search for wgf-9 then we can jump through Um, you might need to refresh here. Um, apologies. Um, no? Nine is this default security model. No, our thing is, um, I just pushed changes in there and there should be, sorry. Maybe a different branch? Um, no, I just failed something in the commit. Then in the meanwhile, I can ask, uh, can I ask uh, others uh, a stupid question? So just to make sure, like what we are doing is that uh, when the RD remembers some information about the device, it will not be tied in any way to the IP address, just no, in case no. the IP mapping uh, changes, right? No, not to the IP okay. address. And, and when we say remember things, is that, for instance, if uh, the, the in the case of Lightweight like N2M, there is a lot of observations preset. So those can be migrated to the new device or I don't know the term if it is migrated or something else, but like so, those would be the kind of thing that is remembered, right? Um, no, those observations would be, I mean, well, that's, that's, that's application thing. level thing. That's, that's, di that's completely different things. Okay. Um, that's the observation. You, you might think about migrating observations when the, the endpoint changes its, its address and renews its registration. But really, that's a, a that's a different topic there. Okay. Okay. Uh, fine. So the new branch should be up there now. So refresh should give you the. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So WGF um, nine, please. Next one. Another one or? Yeah, that's um. Sorry, just I just need a moment to to align myself for you. Uh, no problem. Okay. Yeah. This is this is uh, this is something. Up. So I've brought this up um, earlier with a with a mail in a different form. Um, this touches on the topic of um, clients relying on links and whether they can really um, use the information as it's coming from the resource directory or need to verify it. Um, so suppose um, suppose someone's po someone's using an have a, 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 describing an application where they um, basically use the clients. So where they look up something and then just plain post there. Um, 
are we generally fine with using links from a resource directory there? Because that post could, I mean, the, the, the intention of that post could really be anything, and the intention uh, and the interpretation on the server depends on on what they advertise as link properties. So, um, naively, I'd say that even such applications, and this could be used as an example to put in there, um, would need to check back um, if they sub if they kind of submit a form in a in a coral uh, in a coral document that's winds up in a resource directory or something like that. If they follow such a form, they or or post something based on a resource type, they should probably check back with the origin server because that resource directory could be misrepresenting them. Unless, of course, we're trusting the resource directory. So this is, um, where are we with respect to, to, um, to doing actions with one's credentials um, based on information that was discovered that is really more of a hint lab, at a hint lab. I don't understand. Um, and I just see that you're seeing something different than I see. So I've been rambling on about a point that is not this one. I'm I'm sorry. If I've been through this document the last two days, and I seem to mix up things. Um, please give me a second. I'll be right back with focus. I only see the two uh, WGF dash nine. Yeah. Item. So. so. So that's that's the that's the one that I was talking about. Okay. Um, so the, 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 quest, the question that's being posed here is um, when, when an application is developed, how much should the developers lean towards not trusting the res not requiring a trusted resource directory and thus asking the application to verify everything they got from the RD from the origin server as far as it affects the semantics of the request that it will later be sent? versus um, just relying on a trusted RD and specifying that the RD must only contain content um, that can later be acted on, e e um, even if that means that the RD will effectively gain the, privil gain the privileges of the well-known core resource of every um, device around. Sounds a bit like I'm still not making perfect sense here. I think I think we are just going through the. We are still probably all of us reading this part. Yeah. Yeah. Is, is the is this part that you're talking about, right? Yeah. The highlighted yeah. part. Yeah. Okay. I'm just not sure what hints. Uh, what do we mean by hints? So, so there's, there's. And when you say discovered information, you mean like uh, what, like a link uh, relation or? Primarily target attributes. So the target attributes. Yeah. the target attributes that are kind of the the archetypical um, hint level information are things like content format or uh, like the accepted content format. So when you discover a resource, you don't have to go and try posting data in any serialization you could come up with, but you discover that this is accepting SENML only in CBOR serialization, so I'll make my request SENML plus CBOR. These, um, these, link these target attributes are um, work properly as hints, so nothing goes wrong if someone has the wrong hint. The worst case is that they kind of stumble through different options, or worst case, it's a, a soft denial of service. Um, but nothing is going um, really badly wrong. Um, resource types are a bit of a different beast when they are used to ascribe meaning to operations that could be done on them. So um, on the mailing list, I think we have this example of um, 
starting starting a port scan on another device. And you could trigger this by basically um, posting something, some, some document to that port scanner's um, scan resource. And if a device is misinformed and thinks that at that very resource there is something um, more benign or, or more harmless, then it could be triggered to that it could trigger a port scanner because it's, it thinks it's talking to a resource directory. So in those cases that um, target attributes are less of a less hint level and more um, inf important information for using this resource. The point of this this item in, in section 7.2 is that um, applications need to think about what can go wrong if the client discovers um, unsuitable information and then either prescribe that the, the, the information in the resource directory must be limited to the suitably authorized um, endpoint that put it in there. Or alternatively, they can say that the that the endpoint must verify the information, for example, by after having discovered that this resource is there, asking that server again whether it's really a resource directory and not maybe say a port scanner. I don't know if any, nobody's commenting anything, but um, I don't, my first uh, feeling about it is that maybe we are specifying too much on the RD. Is this something that is really, really about the RD uh, interfaces? This is not about so much... the application, how the application should behave. Sorry, yeah. It's it's about what what things an application needs to consider when picking a way of using the resource directory. And yes, possibly we're going too far in, in specking things out here. It's just but then like, like, yeah, sorry. Maybe, maybe, maybe the response is just this, this would this would take us too far. Well, I mean, it's my first. Uh, I need to think more about it. I would like other people's comments, but that was my first thought about it. Um, I don't know if all this have because uh, I mean the assumption is that the application knows how to work with links, right? And and yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. So it should know that it, it how to how to understand the link attribute and what it actually means, or how to, or uh, I mean anything really on the on the link. Um, I don't know. I mean, um, maybe so. This will go on the security section, right? Seven. Yeah, this is the policies. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. I don't know. Uh, any other opinions, please? So th th there are several things that come to mind here. <clears throat> and one is um, th there is another aspect of trustworthiness um, that, that we might talk about for resource directories. Uh, which is that the resource directory does not suppress registrations. Yes. Um, so uh, whether you trust that or not is is uh, maybe an important uh, consideration. And for the veracity of the uh, registrations, um, another important question is um, trust implies liability. So um, how can the uh, resource directory be sure that uh, what it got, what, what it is presenting is actually the truth? That I think we can solve. Because for, for that particular point, um, the, the rules would come into play where the RD is only accepting registrations for um, about um, or accepting statements about links that the 
registrant is actually um, authorized to act as the authority server of. So the credentials that are presented to the RD must be as good as they would need to be to just get a to do a get on there via via Coop S. In a, for especially in a PKI setting. That's a good restriction. Because, I mean, because with the uh, when you register from other endpoints, uh, I mean, you, you you don't know who is the owner of that uh, URI or that domain. That has been a problem also in other scenarios. That's you know, that's 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 one of the link one of the policies that we describe as could that might be applicable. So is this for the default security model, or is it for no. all security models? This is. Um, this is general guidance on when to apply this particular security model. So security model 7.2 is about entered resources. And this is precisely about, this is um, describing to implementers when this uh, security policy would be relevant. So if you rely on information to be um, authoritative, if you want to rely on information from the RD to be authoritative about the resources that are the context of those links or the targets possibly, um, then you need to specify that in your security policies and the RD must only accept registrations that contain data that is, um, that is from that uh, certified origin. Actually, now I have more questions. So, in that registration, you append also the. Uh, so it's only for public key, I suppose, right? And you append the public key of the registrar of the other domain, or. Um. Oh, 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 yeah. Sorry. So this this would this would um. Practically require some form of of certificate um, based authentication. Where the registrant provides uh, cred provides credentials that it would usually use in a server capacity. So traditionally, this could be just the the server certificate. Mm. Mm. Basically, if if my server goes to your resource directory and shows the thing it shows to anyone asking for HTTPS myserver.com. And, I, and my server shows this when registering, then the resource directory can be sure that this is exactly. actually acts on behalf of, of my server.com. Uh, okay. so it's not the certificate, but something signed with the certificate, right? Um, it's, yeah, it's present, it's, it's, the, the certificate becomes part of the of the link setup. And I, I guess it could also be even more restrictive and you can only register things that you are actually, that the co-op endpoint can only register things that is hosting itself. Yeah, so this, this is this is one of the models that can that can be applied there. And this is basically what, what the section 7.2 is about. And the, the, the real question at hand is just how much do we how much basically how much do we have to spell all this out um, to people that might be that consider implementing it okay maybe, maybe we can to go in order so that we don't get digressing too much like so is that the way I mean I guess that's the way you want to handle it too right or you prefer open discussion and just because you, you have a lot of points and maybe sorry yeah. Yes, I've, I have a lot of other points, and this would yep. probably make a good candidate for um, postponing to to further discussion on the mailing list. Yeah, I think so. Um. So if you so um, if you could skip to the other um, WDF nine point. Um. That's a that's a pro hopefully easier one. Um, I'm not sure whose comment that was right now. Um, 
This is yeah ben, uh, Ben's comment. Uh, he's not really happy with the basic, basically with us um, assigning additional behavior to an existing well-known resource. Um, I understand the point, and we have been a bit sloppy about this in earlier versions, even with respect to IANA updates. So my first question here is: um, Are we aware of any implementations that that are out in the wild that post to, that do simple registration and do that on well-known core as opposed to say a newly minted well-known RD? I, I only know that in Lightweight and Twin we don't use that. Basic, basically, the two options here are um, yes, go with it, or give him at least any reason why we are doing this here and not in a newly minted one. And right now, I can't come up with one, so I'm leaning towards saying that yeah, let's just pick another well-known resource and not overload well-known core. Maybe I don't understand the question. Uh, so well-known core is the safe description of the device that. Um, this is about where the simple registration happens by posting to well-known core. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's indeed weird. Okay, okay. if 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 you say it's weird, um, um, I was expecting that if anyone that you would defend the choice of well-known core here, um, as you don't, um, I'll. If no one else speaks up, I'll just make the changes and let's take well-known RD. Yeah, I would probably add a note that uh, previous versions of this document used when on call for this and implementations may want to do what they need to do. Um, would probably is, I think, the normative language that we should use in that case. Um, yep, fine with me. Thank you. Um, so on level eight, so let's stick with that document, just go for eight. Um, that's a weird thing that came up in the comment and it's probably, it's possibly only weird because I was not familiar with the details of co-op DTLS, so um, we don't have video, but um, can I have an imaginary show of hands? Um, who thinks that, default, who would expect their DTLS implementation in co-op S to do replay protection? Um, so I was replay protection of what? Of previously seen messages. Oh, definitely. So um, I looked it up, and in DTLS it's optional. And co-op uh, and RFC seven two five two doesn't say anything about that it's mandatory to use in this connections context. So um, I was a bit taken aback when I read that comment and found out that he's perfectly right, and that if we are describing this application as securely usable over Co-op S, we should um, say something about why it's OK, which is basically that every operation except those particular ones, in which case you should, um, are long-term idempotent anyway, so um, replays won't have any ill effect. And yes. Re um, the ending of registration is something that could be replayed. So the alternatives to that would be to say that co-op servers that run a resource directory must have replay protection in co-op as enabled. And the third option would be to come up with a um, very um, quick update to co-op to say that, hey, if you're using co-op over DTLS, then turn on your replay protection or else. Um, preferences. Well, yeah, I mean, replay protection has to be mandatory. <laughs> I thought it was already. I mean, I, I could have been wrong, and this is all a no issue because I missed some update to the DTLS specification, but that's at least what's what it says in general. Is there anything in 7925? Okay. 
I don't find the word replay in 7925. Yeah. I, there's two two times it appears and it's not for replay protection as far as I know. You say 7925? Yes. There's no, there's no mandatory. Replay protection in seventy nine twenty five. Yeah. Ah, oh, yeah, and Thomas, you're the author, so so you know. I should know. Yeah. <laughs> Although. <laughs> oh. Well, then maybe we, we just, as Kristen, as you suggested, like we just make sure that there is some text there commenting that and uh, forcing DTLS to use replay protection. So we'll just say it there in RD and then hope that it gets picked up in the co And what I understood from you is that the, the replay protection is optional, right? Not that it's yes. not present. It's, op <laughs> it's optional, yes, but um, <laughs> that means that no one can rely on it unless they... Yeah, maybe some comment there, but maybe this is also feedback to be sent, uh, well, elsewhere as well. Um, Thomas is already here. Maybe you, Thomas, can check that. I don't know if there is any room for any update of all the drafts. Yeah, yeah, sure. So next, yeah. or um, other comments? So, Christian? Uh, yeah, just next level eight, please. Um, yeah, there's um, so so maybe that's a good point to talk about odd examples. Um, we've received a few comments about things that are in the examples that honestly um, I only skimmed over in the list in the more recent revisions because it's been the same all the time, and some of those are. Um, this very long example of what um, of what lightweight end to m is doing, and there's something similar in the other example, and those contain terms that no one is explaining that are probably not even relevant. So while I could try and find reference for M the MSISDN um, term that's yeah, relevant uh, there, those reference actually the all, all of the parts related to SMS they are not that relevant anymore. Um, I maybe I can share the version 1.2 of the OMA spec and, and we can or, or I can check it and send something to you or how it looks like now. We, we, we can run this by the OMA spec, but I think the more relevant question is what of this is really relevant to resource directory? Because I'm pretty sure that um, yeah. even if even if I am an SDN, I was still part of the current library m time specification. It's not something that makes a lot of sense to talk about in the resource directory. Um, mm, I agree. I agree. So I think you could update the table and remove, for instance, that part, the SMS number, SMS, and the remote, MS, uh, Probably the whole table. So the question, the question, yeah. I mean, there's, there's a few things that are kind of spread over there. So why are we having these things there in the first place? Because that is relevant to the question of how much I can rip out. Well, I mean, so as, again, to my knowledge, because I don't know the whole co-op ecosystem out there, but to my knowledge, uh, Live Within 2 and Fox are using resource directory or at least some flavor of it, uh, even if it is just a registration interface. And that's what is on the text at the moment from what I can see, just the registration interface for OMA yeah. version 1.0. Okay, then, then, then let me rephrase that question. Um, yeah. Why don't we just say that OMA lightweight M2M is using these and those parts of the resource directory um, in Appendix 10.2 and possibly illustrate a request and response? We currently don't and and be done hmm. with it because we're talking here about this object. Yeah, model yeah, that has a, so. Yeah, all of these. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. Actually, you have the stuff. 
this stuff on the object IDs and base URI resource, I think that could create confusion to the people that are only interested on the resource directory. If they want to know about the live with the term registration, they can go to the live with the term spec. I, I tend to agree with that. But I don't know who wrote that uh, anymore. Do you? Um, I have a hunch that if I run git blame on the um, on, on the current version, it will show that I think it's it, has Michael, been, maybe. it has always been there before this thing even has been put into git. Yeah, well, then maybe Zach himself. I don't know. But yeah, I agree on the point raised there. What does the group think? Well, there is very little point in, in enumerating those additional registration parameters without explaining what they mean. Um, so uh, I would just uh, change the the um, colon after additional optional uh, registration parameters are defined into a period and delete the table. Um, and what about, I mean, we didn't receive a precise complaint about the object model thing, but does it, I mean, then again, we don't have anything to act on here, so yeah. Yeah, Maybe. this is this is all. <sighs> so w w when you have a standard somewhere, and then you have another normative document uh, rephrasing the same thing, then you are always in a dangerous uh, territory. Yeah. I mean, I, th I understand this to be, to be an, an, an illustrative addition, and it might even make sense in something like um, um, core interfaces, although this is really not the style I would recommend, but one might be tempted to recommend something like this. I'm just wondering, like, the more I read about it, the more I can imagine someone getting confused. Like, for instance, with the binding mode, you have their... A, I don't know, U, UQ, what does the Q mean? Uh, do they have to know about Q mode in Lewitt and Twim? I don't think so. Mm. Uh, we have in the call, I think, uh, b -b -b Thomas, you, you also joined the uh, OMA every now and then, maybe, or? No, not, not really. Not really, yeah. okay. Because I'm, I'm hesitant to just remove the whole thing. Uh, that's a bit, um, maybe a bit too much. Maybe we, we could just specify something at the beginning, saying that this is just an example of how Live Within 2M does it, that this is not something illustrative of how resource directory should work. Uh, what do you think? What does, what does everybody think? Because the rest of the text from from the, I mean, the, the big, from the beginning of the example onwards is, is correct as it is but uh, like christian is saying the maybe the, what is the point of showing there the object model of live within 2 m is this uh is that relevant? Even, even right anymore i think that oma has a slightly extended object model now mm, well i mean the path as it is presented is correct base your okay. object id instance resource and resources Mm, but anyway, I mean, things may oh, change where, in the future, of course. Where is, where is the actual example? This is I think, I think the, 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 the best part, the relevant part is 10.2.2, lightweight M2M defines the registration interface. Um, the registration URI is specified as slash RD. That's, That's the, the... Oh, I'm showing you the screen. Well, that's even better. So here you go. This is where you have the latest version of the OMA spec uh, and the registration interface. And this is the example. I think SMS was removed, maybe? I don't know. Oh. Sorry, that's a cat and a microphone. Sorry. 
Can can we add just uh, some? Ref I don't know if you can add reference to uh, other specifications as informative or just uh, I don't know. FYI, this is where you can find it. Not this link, by the way, but the official one later on. And this is the example. I don't know. I think we should do that. Kind of slim it down. Slim it down to. I mean, this this would be removing kind of. One, two, three, but about two and a half screen pages of, of text. But I don't see more than five lines of that is relevant, plus possibly mm -hmm. the reference. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I would delete the entire section 10.2 and in the introduction to 10, just say that an example can be found in the lightweight M2M document XYZ. Mm -hmm. I'd be very happy with this. I think that that's much, much safer and much more stable. Yeah. Um, there is. So, um, there is one more thing in this in this section. Um, okay. That, now let's let's go through this just by the numbers. Um. Next number eight, please. Um, yeah, um, I put this at this high level because I'm just not too familiar with all the six man and um, um, neighbor discovery thing. Um, would it be okay to just update the text to say that the RDA is always in router announcements? Because every commenter that came back to this seemed to think that it should be the way, but it's just said it's just not said anywhere. Please repeat, I got lost. I um, got lost where? So this FF35 thing is an example, right? I, I, oh, no, R um, RDA. This, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about what's on the screen, on the share screen, highlighted there. Oh. Okay, I read this the other way around. Yeah, so RDA holes should occur in exactly the same message as where we would put DNS servers. Uh, so let's check where we can put in DNS servers. Okay, I, I can, I can, I can do, I can act on this. I think. Thank you. Okay, uh, next point, please. Unless comments on this. Um. Yep. Yeah, the top one on sleepy notes. Um. Oh, just just pick any that hasn't been addressed before. No, sorry. Just uh, let me know uh, which one. Pick pick any that hasn't been addressed before. Just okay. I'll just go there. to the next in the row. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Um. So I don't know a lot about stateless configuration and DHCP. Um. If someone with more familiar familiarity could have could come up with text to address this, um, this would help me a lot. I think the, the whole point is that um, in, in the bullet list on page 16, um, you, you say that the, the we say that the address configuration, if the address configuration is done using DHCP, uh, we can also provide additional information via a DHCP option. And the comment is, is pointing out that we can supply DHCP options even if we do the address configuration using Slack. Um. 
Um, but we don't have to because we have the better RDAO that's used with Slack, right? Yes, uh, we don't have to. But uh, the the if there is some some DHCP going on for some reason, mm -hmm. even if that is not providing the address configuration, we can okay. skip to supply the DHCP option, and that's a V six thing. V four cannot do that, as far as I know. Mm -hmm. So it would be an additional source. So, so basically, the text is right, but it just should not just be. It should not be limited to if the address configuration is performed, but if when the HCP is used. Yes. Or is in use, I probably would say yes. Right. That's then that should be an easy fix. Thank you. So the next one we already had. So um, wrap around, please. Um, yeah, sleepy notes. Um, sleepy notes have been around for um, basically before I really actively um, joined the group. So I don't know whether what's the plan here. We are referencing sleepy notes in the introduction, um, but we don't I mean we don't have any still up to date documental reference. So. Um, should we just add a bit of an explanation and uh, like respond without additional information there? That's what I'd go for. So just say, yeah, sleepy nodes are a complex thing and we don't put anything more there because there isn't currently a document that gives more details. Or have sleepy, has the topic of sleepy nodes um, slapped in so deeply that we would remove the references? So basically, the problem in here comes from the reference saying uh, the remote server usually used to provide proxy access to the endpoint. So we can just remove that and get done with that. Sorry, Kasten, you were going to say? Well, the, the reason that we don't have a sleepy node document is that uh, essentially, all approaches that you can use there have some patent thickens around them. Have some what? Patent thickens. Oh, no. So you okay. uh, get uh, stung pretty badly. Uh, and the, the, uh, the approach that uh, probably is uh, safest in that uh, regard is to use a proxy and have the sleepy node alert uh, the proxy in some form uh, when it wakes up. And then the proxy can can forward requests that, that it's stored uh, uh, while waiting for, for the sleepy node to come up. Mm -hmm. There are tons of other approaches. And I, I, I even have a, a T2TRG document that describes another approach. Um, but uh, th this is probably the most basic uh, approach and now I'm trying to find out um, which text this refers to. Cellular M two M. But this this text is basically the introduction to the use cases. So yeah. do we need to say. I mean, I think the question is. I think the question from the commenter is more like a question like how does this work rather than yeah. uh, that he doesn't like the text like uh, thing. Yeah. So if if we could add there some reference, basically if any if any of the sleepy notes document were still active, I would just add a reference for example as described in. Now they've been um, they've run out of steam around 2014 the latest at least the ones with sleepy in the yeah. title that I could easily find. So the, the, the problem is that the actual documents that people have written all were trying to get some uh, existing patent claim in as an essential uh, component. OK. And, um, so th that, that's why they all died. That doesn't mean that the, the approach is wrong. Yeah. Uh, we just never got anyone to document uh, one of the, the less dangerous approaches. 
So, so basically, we, we would be waiting for someone to write a minimal sleepy note, like some, some, basically something like my resource directory extensions proxying um, when making the proxy a bit eager, mm. something like that. Um, yeah. Um, let, let, let me take that as an action that I supply a pull request for that particular paragraph. I, I think we can fix that. Can, can we just, ref I mean, maybe phrase that in some different way in which basically the proxy is, uh, or the, 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 the middle entity is just providing, I don't know, cache resource representations or something like that? I mean, that, that, that is a proxy. Well, yeah, but the, <laughs> yeah, so. I, I think I think even the text is is, is I think because I think that's right. what I think that's what he's asking like because I think he's uh, the 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 comment is about uh, how can you uh, provide access to an endpoint that is not connected and maybe what we need to clarify is that we are not providing access to the endpoint but to the latest resource representation stored somewhere. Yeah, we we, we I mean the, the proxy does not need to. So so, so my kind of yeah. draft response says it, it doesn't need to. It just needs to have representations. And if it doesn't have, then it may do whatever. But especially fail the proxying operation. But yeah, mm -hmm. if if we have a plan forward, and I think we have, we, yeah. I think we can jump to the next one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, on the on the yeah the the home building automation, um. It's it's a bit vague. Um, does anyone have a better idea than just spring, um, pointing out more precisely where where to where an RD could be deployed in those cases? So, in the again from my own limited uh, knowledge, I know that one of the the IKEA truck fee was using uh, lightweight and and therefore it was using some resource directory. And that could be one example. I don't know if Zigbee dot dot uh, uses co-op. I think he used to, but I don't know if he uses RD or co-op anymore. Maybe other people more familiar with OCF or with other SDOs or other real life scenarios can provide more info. If not, maybe some vision on how it could be. For but in, this is the for the case of home. I don't know where. Actually, this is very broad because it's home and building automation, so it's pretty big. Yes. Yeah. Maybe some someone from Philips on the Philips Lightning or something like that. I don't know. Yep. But, um. So I'll take this as if we find some examples to sprinkle in there, we can use that. Otherwise, I'll just um point out that where, where an RD can be used. It's probably just a few words here and there to add that. OK, thank you. Um, there is one more WGF8 at the bottom. Um, and we've received several comments on the topic of how does the resource directory know which expectations the clients have with respect to the security policies. Um, my take here is that the resource directory doesn't need to know because the resource directory just provides and it's up to the clients to ask for ask to, to only accept an RD if it's somehow indicating that it provides those things. And that would typically be because it's explicitly configured. Um, but as this is possibly a bit of a more controversial topic, um, if someone doesn't agree with that statement here, please let me know. Yeah, that, that's a classical authorization uh, problem. So I cannot really trust anything until uh, it, it's authorized uh, for being trusted. And uh, the, the source of that authorization, uh, of course, is not, not defined here. Um, so the, the, the fact that uh, we can authenticate an RD in, in some way 
doesn't tell us what it is useful for. And uh, the, the thing itself saying what it is useful for is, is not really useful. We need some some uh, third party, some trusted third party announcement uh, what what it is useful for. But we also don't don't provide a defined way to do that. That would be ACE or an ACE token or something like that. I think I can I can factor that in into the response here. Yeah. Um, there is one more point at this level, but. I don't understand the question yet well enough to ask meaningful stuff. So I, I'll briefly check whether we have anything on the issue tracker at level seven, at level eight, and otherwise, please um, jump to level seven. Yeah, so eight is clear on the issue tracker. That brings us to the level seven items. Um, that's the first. So. Yeah, um, we use examples that don't use register um, for that you don't have that use uh, resource types and other registration uh, other things with obligatory registration that are not actually registered. Um, I can defend some of them, especially the ones where we are picking stuff from 6690 that used values it didn't define as for examples, but we are taking over those examples. And we are using some that I won't try to defend and just replace with examples. Um, the ones in the middle are the interesting ones, that is core.a and core.p. Um, they have been used in examples all around um, in, earlier in, in different drafts because core interfaces used to be a prominent thing that was kind of expected to go through at some point. Um, I don't think that this future is clear enough that it justifies having those code points here, but then again, it limits the recognizability of the examples. So any better suggestions than replacing those with example.core.a or something like that, or example.actuator? Well, another comment on if the examples have to be real, do we have the u equals uh, Kelvin, for example, the unit as a... So that's that's complete. That's completely fine because those are target attributes, and those target attributes are not generally re registered. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Um, Only for the registered ones. There, there, I can there, <clears throat> there I can advertise any possible any, any things that I would like to see as I see fit. Um, <clears throat> okay. At, at least from a from a from a registration point of view. Well, I mean, if, if you can put more realistic examples, I don't see why not. It's just more... I, can't, I can't put more realistic examples. I just can put examples that don't look like code points of cutting. Mm. Yeah. Any any other thoughts? To me, this sounds like the reasonable. Oh, sorry. At this point, I would like to have any unit names be send them a. Compatible, but that, that's not the problem we are looking at right now. Um, yes, but I'll take that up as bycatch from the comments. Thank you. Was K not for Kelvin in CNML? Yes. Ah, well, then they are. At least the ones I have seen in the draft. I think that's the only one anyway. Okay, um, next next seven, please. Yeah, um, it's not so much a question, but more of a point. Um, there appears to be a, a more broad document on your eyes that can be used to, that, that are kind of bearer tokens, I'd say. Yes, and I'm just stressing that those URIs that we are ha we are having here are not, and it's supposed to be that way. Yeah. Okay. Next item, please. Um, Christian, have you checked that document? Is something relevant that we should check as well? Just to, uh, so no. If, um. So, so I only checked it to understand what they mean, and they mean URIs as bearer tokens. Mm -hmm. And that's, my claim is that we intentionally do not do this. Is 
this is the next one or do we do this for... um hang on a second um this is the next one that we haven't processed yet yeah um i think i have a good response in saying that do we support networks that don't support multicast well means that they don't support it efficiently or conveniently or there might not at all or there might be any other reason why they don't support it well um but i'm not a big expert there so if there is anything better to say it would be helpful i might also add that the sequence the the ranking i did here i'm i'm, I'm i won't try to defend the the sequence of priorities here it's just something that hopefully allows us to go through the important parts uh, without while skipping the obviously unimportant ones. Okay, next, please. Um. Yeah. So the the question comes back about the comes again back to to those to those URIs. Um, we are exposing them. We even though they are not helpful. Um, I think of the, so this is especially in the, in the endpoint lookup. Um, I think of them as useful as identifiers, um, but do have to admit that it could be done completely different as well. Um, do we have anything in, in defense of offering those, um, those URIs as kind of the anchor points for information about the registration that, that I should add? Um, reading the question, so the endpoint lookup does expose the, well, What does it mean that the RD does not need to make them accessible? When the RD answers the lookup, it provides a series of links. Yes, but that's basically because we that's basically because we can't represent um, because that's the best structured data format we had available at the time we started working with resource directory. So originally they were even kind of self links that didn't expose the resources. It's the point is that we are we are we are describing those resources here, but we are not expecting the client to be able to make to use the resource in any way. We are just using it as a name here, and that's something that might. That, that I think is understandable with the mindset of this more coming from the RDF area where you're, you don't necessarily need to dereference a URI to, to use it because you could use it as an identifier. But it, I understand how it is confusing. And then again, nothing we could do easily would probably change this. So I think it's just up to us to describe why this makes sense in, in this particular application. So that may, maybe to, to, to explain this also with the last paragraph here, um, if we did a resource directory, for example, in Coral, the RD might choose not to tell the, you tell the names of the registration resources, but just say that there is a resource and that has these in those properties. Um, and, and choose not to tell the name. In link format, we don't have that option. So do, do we have an information disclosure problem here? Um, possibly if, um, if the, if the names are, are come, if the RD comes up with the names in a way that is neither random nor deterministic from the endpoint for, from the visible attributes, um, then we might have an information disclosure problem. Um, so maybe we should give a bit of guidance to the RD what they better not put into the your eyes however they shape it so that they don't create this this information disclosure yeah, that sounds good to me yep well if 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 no pushback comes comes from 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 the response that i'll send 
uh, to bury in this, then, then I think we'll be good with this. So, um, is, by the way, there is this use case uh, link catalogs. I wonder if we shouldn't also put a comment there. Is um, it part where the resources may be shared through data brokers and blah, blah, blah? I think there will there is one point on on that in in the the comments to come, that is, um, but but the link catalog is more about registered links, isn't it? That's the link catalog is about sharing resources and not sharing the endpoint uh, registrations. Um, I don't know. It says um, there is also web link web link, web link references also there. Um. Yeah, but I think this all sure. pertains to, okay. to resources that are registered at DRD and not the resources that DRD creates by itself on itself. Oh yeah, after on the lookup. Yeah, true, 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 true. It's not exactly the same thing. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. I think we'll we, we might manage to go through the, the level seven in the time allocated. So those are hopefully the, the most important ones. Um so next next item, please. Yeah. Um, this is this is one of the of the other parts where there are examples in there that are a bit odd. Um, and in this case, in the luminary part, um, yes, you can. So we are, what we're describing there is that the release that the luminaries that are part of the system ask look up groups by their res basically and decide by their resources whether they should join that group. Now that's something that's not completely fundamentally broken, provided that they check additional properties of those links. But it's not really something that I would recommend and put in the examples that we, even though we don't explicitly say this is how it should be done. I mean, if it's in the example section of an, of a document, then this kind of speaks a bit. Um, and this was asked about explicitly now whether this is really what is going on here. And I'll take this as an opportunity to ask whether we might not want to remove this part there as well. Especially given that there is an, a document that describes things around that area coming up that describes how to do it more properly, let's say, being the, the group, um, group discovery. This is also on the examples, right? Yes, this is the example 10.1. Chris, I'm thinking also about that. Uh, maybe the text that is intended now in the resource directory document is not really about um, uh, finding out your membership, but the membership you are supposed to have, actually, considering the resources you are trying to export. Yes, but that's a very odd design. Right, so it's not implying any any previous registration of membership. That, that's certainly not true. Yeah, but it's, impl it's implying that, the, so it's, it's designed around a group being registered and by virtue of you having some links that are in the group, you think that it's good for you to be in that group as well. Yeah. So an expected membership. <laughs> Provided link, equal link name equality means anything. Mm -hmm. Um, may, may I ask, so the sector information is added automatically based on the resource characteristics? Is that what you said, or did the, I catch it No, wrong? no, sector, sector doesn't come into play here at all. Ah, sorry. Uh, this is this is just a resource, a resource sees a resource directory, looks at the groups that are registered there, and sees that one group is so similar to itself that yeah. it might just as well um, make itself a part of it. Hmm. With no access whatsoever, no, no restrictions. I mean, this it's a bit, it's a bit of an odd example, yeah. Yeah, that's why it's referring to the odd examples uh, text. So my preference here would be to remove that part of the example. The rest is largely good, but this particular piece could be a bit disturbing. Yeah, to be frank, the slash co-op group, I 
I just have never used it actually. I don't know how people are using it or what they think about it. Um, it that's the one you're talking about, right? Um, that's neither. That's, well, that's <laughs> okay. Not, yeah, yes, that as well. So, um, above there is that part where the end, where the endpoint joins it automatically by having discovered the group, and then alternatively the CT can communicate, and that's by the way. And I didn't notice, and no other reviewer did, but you just did. Um, mm -hmm. Um, that part, by the way, is being ripped out. Uh, this being removed from that experimental RFC and not part of the group compiz anymore because nobody implemented it. Yeah. Um, so probably those two last parts about it automatically joining the group and about using direct multicast access could, address configuration. Should, should, in my opinion, just be removed because they are confusing examples at best. Yeah. What does the group thing? I, I tend to agree as well. I, To be frank, the examples, I, I only look at the language in terms, so I, I'm not so familiar with the laminary ones. Um, could we? I think there's two more, um, two, two more level seven, uh, three more level seven points. I think they they are quick, and we have a chance to at least brush yeah. over them in time. I'm showing it already. So, oh, sorry. About, since Christian, you added some more points in any other business, uh, just to be sure you you cover them if you want to today. <laughs> uh, yes, good point. But I still want to go through this. Um, I have no idea what is meant by disperse network. So if anyone has a suggestion on what to say there instead or how to just explain what it is, um, please do so. Otherwise, I've, my tendency would be to rephrase this, not to say disperse if no one can explain what it means. Well, this is in the abstract. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I'll take those comments happily by mail just as well. Yeah. Um, next point, please. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, oh, yes, yes. I, I updated. Yes, yes. Okay. Thank you. Next point, please. I updated it a bit, by the way. I haven't finished updating it yet. But yeah. Yes, I updated um, the, the big things that they are commenting. I, I know that there's a lot of things going around here. Uh, yeah, and on six man, um, I don't have text here, but basically there was this question: "But have we talked about this with six man?" And as I understand, we haven't. Um, and I'm not too familiar with the six man procedure, so I can, of course, just go over there and send them a mail and ask what, what they think of it. But if anyone around feels more qualified, especially due to prior experience with six man, yeah. um, I'd appreciate if someone could take this over here. Maybe you, you, Karsten, Jim, maybe perhaps you have been working before with Sixman? Guess to say two names. Never been the, never been close to them. Okay. Uh, Karsten? Okay. Maybe? Sorry. Yeah. Well, I have Sixman meetings, of course, but uh, this is really about getting a code point from them. Uh, so it would be polite to, to present this at some point, and uh, mm -hmm. otherwise we just need to do the registration request. Okay. So, so well, if if you want Christian as chairs, we can also contact them. But I, I also have no experience with them. Um. So, Carsten, by present um by present you mean just in a, in in a regular IT kind of ask for a slot in their working group meetings. Well, I'll just send a message to the mailing list. I think that's okay. enough. Okay. Um. Then I basically I'll I, I can I can do that and um if anything comes back that's good we have something to say to the comment and 
at least the exports would be will be alerted of that registration is coming from us. Um, so if I may have some of the remaining minus one and a half minutes, um, I'd like to use the, uh, everyone's attention to just point out that because I think it's kind of relevant to the group and I've been asked about it, um, I've started running a few services at coop.amzoes.com. Um, the link is in the minutes. And especially that is running a resource directory that I, for the foreseeable future, um, intend to keep operational. That's roughly working on the first come first serve base based that basis that will um, that I'm writing the text for. Um, and if someone comes in unauthenticated, then everyone could impersonate them. But that's kind of part of the model here. Uh, it's also running a cross proxy that's not crossing over to HTTP, but crossing between the co-op plus TCP, a co-op non-TCP, and especially now the co-op plus WebSockets um, protocols. So if anyone wants to play around with them, um, feel free to use that. And um, also in the minutes I've linked to a uh, now existing very, very minimal, I'm hoping, still, still working to get it fleshed out, um, co-op over WebSockets client and server implementation that can run a few demos so you can um, explore a bit more. Possibly this would also be a good thing to link from co-op.me or any of the other things. Just basically my, me, me, hope, me hoping to get a bit of feedback from you here because this is some so because having publicly running RDs was something that was requested before. Yeah, and I, and actually we didn't find. Remember when we were looking on through Shodan and other tools, we didn't find so many. Um, so I guess you will be. Uh, uh, Karsten is managing co-op technology. I guess a link could be added to this to the tools, right? Yes. Oh, maybe you already did. Actually, I don't know. Um, oh, I need to do that. Okay. So just, I, this is, this is just the first pu public mention of this here, so. And I think, um, I mean, as I mean, I think this could be very interesting for the mini list as well, if you want to. Yep, I'll follow up there. Yeah. Um, I will also share it internally, and let's give it a try. Does it accept lightweight and term registrations? Um, Perhaps, or some form of... Um, yep. um, it won't accept lightweight and term registrations because it doesn't implement this slash RD resource. Um, and especially it has, um, it picks paths that might help to expose client misbehavior. Mm. Um, but it's probably a good idea to add in slash RD, um, to, to add slash RD as kind of a fallback resource. Yeah, good point. Um, I'll add that and then maybe it just works. Mm, thanks. Well, I'll show it around. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Christian. By the way, this session was great. So um, we have we are running way over time, but uh, just to be clear, uh, we we still have seven more um, levels to go through the resource. Or six more levels to yes, go through this. I'd say everything below four mm -hmm. um, is for people to yeah basically skim over it if something meets your eye that you want to look into. Otherwise, I'll just do what I think is best mm -hmm. um, and merge that up to the point that level zero is literally typos and that stuff. Mm. Um, so if I need, if if I'm really blocked, on, if I get blocked on something, um, I'll just mail the list or see, or ask people on the issue track. I think, um, chairs, are you on the, are you automatically mentioned on the issue tracker? Uh, yes, so I've you? seen, I've seen the mention at least, but I just didn't have time to reply. Okay, so b basically, I'll I'll use escalation levels from posting into the issue tracker where all the authors are anyway to mentioning mm -hmm. shares up to sending it to the mailing list. Um, to me, I, think, I prefer issue tracker, so I'm I'm super happy with that. No problem. Yes, but I can't CC the mailing list on the issue tracker. Yeah, yeah, and then we need to CC every now and then, and that's it. Uh, I'm wondering another thing. Do you need? I mean, uh, we have still the other interim. We don't have a list of topics. Another option was to use the link. Uh, some time for din link discussion, but we could continue in the next session, in the next interim, and just wrap up all the issues. Um, it, it, or would you I like don't it? think that all the issues need working group attention. So if you think okay. it's if you think it's something that should happen, I'm I'm uh, fine I, to I, show I, that. But... I would be happy if it is something. I mean, it doesn't have to be long. It's, it could be just a wrap up session, like to okay. make sure yeah, that we yeah, have. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. And then the rest of the session we can do din link. Unless actually, I take the time now. If, if somebody has a suggestion for the next interim, now is a good time to suggest. 
And if not, I think we can do RD and link DIM link. Sounds okay. good. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Then, uh, do you think we may have a finalized uh, updated version by the end of the month, early October, to consider for a submission? Um, I think it should be. I mean, yeah, I think it should be possible. Yeah, tentatively. I mean, let's check yeah. again at the next interim. <laughs> yeah. Great. Great. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for, for staying a bit longer and, and enjoy the rest of your day in the US and then uh, have a good evening here in Europe. Um, Peter Yi, I don't know where you're based, actually. But have a great time, too. <laughs> and thank you, Christian, by the way, for this amazing work. Thank you very much. Bye. Definitely. Thank, thank you. you. Yes. Thank you. Bye. Bye. See you soon. Bye bye. Thank you.